is the day that the Lord has made. Stand your feet as we get ready to go into worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. Why? If you need a reason, because his mercies are new every day. And because he has favored us, we are alive and here today. So let's give him some praise. I need. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it. For I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Listen, let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, how we thank you for this another chance to be in this place one more time. God, we thank you for just for touching us with your finger of love and giving us one more opportunity to get it right. Now, God, we pray right now and ask that you would forgive us for all of our unforgiven sins. God, that you would create within us a clean heart, oh God, that we could truly serve you. Now, God, we invite your spirit to fall fresh in this place. Let your anointing fall on us, God, that we can be able to say, did not our hearts burn within and let us have a worship experience from on high. But now, God, I pray for everyone that's in this house on today, God, that you would open their hearts and their minds and their ears. Let them be receptive to your word, oh God, that we could have just a closer relationship with you. But then, God, just the same, those that may be on their way, those that may be watching online, God, I pray that you would fall upon them like only you can. God, you know the desires of our heart. You know what we need to fill our cups up. Now, God, we pray that you open up a window and pour out unto us the things, the desires of our heart, the things that you know that we need to be able to go on a little further. Now, whatever the devil has a desire to do, whatever distractions that he may be trying to set, whatever disappointments he may be trying to feel in people's hearts, whatever confusion he may be trying to put on somebody's mind, God, we pray that you would remove him right now in the name of Jesus. Now, God, we pray and move and say thank you in advance for what you're going to do on today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Listen, again, we are uh, thankful unto God for this, another chance to be in the house one more time, to be able to tell God thank you for how he's kept us all week long, how he watched over us, how he continues to maneuver and bless us day after day. And I don't know about you, but there's a few things that we could all look back and thank God for for what he's done just on this week alone. Amen. I don't know about you, but there are some things that I can stop and tell God thank you because it could have been me. 
lying in a hospital bed right now. It could have been me who was stuck on side of the road that had been in an accident and hurt. It could have been me looking for direction and not knowing which way to turn. So when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul does magnify the Lord. And since we're here, we might as well go ahead and praise ye the Lord. Amen. Amen. Listen, our praise team is coming to bless us on this morning. So I invite you to stand to your feet, clap, have a good time, sing along with them. Let's have church on this morning. Yeah. Amen. Oh, 
trials come, they come to make me not strong, but very strong. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. Amen. All right, real quick, just a couple of announcements for this morning. Uh, as you know, we, as always, continue to be in prayer one for another. Uh, all of our known sick and shut in, all of our uh, uh, bereaved families, all of those uh, whose information that we have, as well as those that we don't, we pray and consistently pray that God moves upon each and every one of you, uh, that his healing hand, whatever it is, we trust and serve a God that can answer prayer. Amen. Amen. So we invite you and encourage you to continue to pray one for another uh, as we continue to go through this trying time. Amen. Also, also uh, our meeting, our uh, church business meeting that was scheduled for tomorrow at 7, we will have to postpone that meeting. Amen. So that meeting that was scheduled for tomorrow at 7 will be postponed. I will make sure that we get the information out uh, as to the rescheduled date, but as of right now, that meeting has been postponed. So please, please just make sure you're following us uh, through our different social media and website, and you will uh, be able to stay up to date on when that meeting happens, as well as other information and other things that we try to uh, get out there. And let me share this. Let me throw this one out there. If you have not had a chance to visit uh, the church website, uh, we invite you and encourage you to go and uh, look at it. Uh, the, it, it. It consistently changes. It consistently updates. Uh, and I believe one of the newest things that's on there is a resources tab on our social media page, amen, on our website, amen, amen. And we, we're, we're starting to put resources out there. I believe we put the Texas rental assistant information on there. We got uh, how you can get food on there. We got on there how you can help get help and assistance with your utilities if need be. So all of these resources, as we get these resources, we'll add them to our website. And that's what it's about. It's about helping the community and it's about helping one another. So you can go on to this, our site, www.gebdallas.com, click resources, and with the click of a button, it will take you to wherever it is you need to get to. So uh, not only for us, if you know somebody, direct them to the page and share with them that there are resources that are available. There's no reason for uh, people to have to go and strain to do things when there is resources and help for them. Amen. So uh, the website is uh, continuing to grow and things are being added. So I encourage you to go and uh, visit that. Uh, I don't believe we have anything else. Listen, uh, we are, uh, as always, we're happy to see Dr. McNeely in the house this morning. Amen. 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 He's here. He's still uh, a little under the weather, but he's fighting through because he wanted to be in the house on today. So we still solicit your prayers for him and that God continues to move. We know he's moving because he's in the house right now. Amen. So we know that our prayers are being answered. So we continue to lift up our pastor to uh, the Lord that he could give him, continue to give him the strength that's needed to lead us, the Lord's people. All right, we're going to go higher uh, into our service. Our praise and worship is coming back with one more. Uh, uh, Sister Gabby told me I ain't got but two, so we're going to give you two good ones. Amen. So they come in with the second one, and then after that, we will hear what thus says the Lord.
attitude of gratitude. God has been so good. Oh. 
So thankful, oh yes I am. Thank you for being God all by yourself. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 12. Beginning at verse number 6. Sometimes certain things the Lord puts on your heart. think about it, you wrestle with it, you try to let it go, but sometimes you simply can't let it go when God speaks and says, this is what I want you to do. So you have to continue to be obedient in what the Lord says do. Second Corinthians chapter 12 beginning at verse number 6 when you found it say amen if you're still looking say Lord help me alright it reads as follows and I'll be reading from the NIV version and it says even if I should choose to boast I would not be a fool because I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain so no one will think more of me 
than is warranted by what I do or say, or because of these surpassingly great revelations. Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses. So that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, how I thank you for this, another chance to be able to stand and declare a word from you. But now, God, right now, how I pray and ask God that you would sit me down, that you may stand, that these, your people, might not see me, but God, see you. God, it is my prayer that you would speak through me, that something can be taken, that it may strengthen our walk with you, strengthen our talk with you, oh God, strengthen our faith and our hope in you, oh God, that we may understand and know that you are forever standing by. But then, God, those that may not know you in the pardoning of their sin, God, we pray that something may be said, that it may touch their hearts, that they come running, saying, Lord, what must I do to be saved? Now, God, have thine own way, like only you can. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If y'all don't mind allowing me to use just for a few moments this morning, a thought or subject, irritated, but illuminated, amen, irritated, but illuminated. I have to be honest this morning. I can honestly say that I am experiencing the same frustration as Paul experienced here in the text. And if truth be told, many of us could probably say the same statement. For some time, I've been dealing with a thorn that just won't go away. Even though I have experienced and felt what God has and can do, there is still an irritation that is felt when I try to move certain directions that remind me to remain humble and trust God. Now, I could tell you what this irritant that I have is I could divulge that information but this one is too personal right now for me to share it with you at least on today anyway but what I am discovering and now questioning is that if I feel this way how many others have an irritant or a thorn in their side that they may be dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. And, and I will tell you that it's, for me, it's not so much as a physical thing. It's not so much as something that I could reach out and touch. But what I find myself wrestling with are the battles that take place in, entirely in my mind. And, and, and unfortunately, that's a dangerous place for a battle to happen. 
And most times, that's where battles start. They start out in your mind. Why? Because your mind is a critical affair that is simply because if the, uh, the mind can be attacked by the enemy, if it can be attacked by the enemy soon after, the body will start to follow. And that's why, that's why sometimes uh, I, try, I try my best. I try to be careful of the sites that I look at on the internet or, or, or try to be careful of the things that I see on social media or I try to be careful even to the things that I listen to because if it sets up shop, if it sets up residence in my mind or even in your mind, some carnal and confusing thing within happens to show itself. Why? Because we're human and because we are human, we have the proclivity and the opportunity to perform those things that are on our minds. Anybody ever been there? You, you've thought about some things for quite some time and you've wrestled and you battled with it. And you, you may know very well that it's not good for you or the outcome of it is not going to be good. And you battled with it and over the course of time you lost the battle and you found yourself doing something you didn't have no business doing or a matter of fact it doesn't necessarily have to be a negative thing it could very well be a positive thing but whatever it was if you thought about it and you battled with it long enough in your head possibility that it can show itself in action why is that because simple it's the mind is a it's a powerful tool it's a powerful thing and it can either develop you or it could pull from you it could either make you stronger or it'll put you in a place of weakness and that's why that's what the devil does he does not want your mind to stay focused on Christ he does not want your mind to stay focused on Christianity positivity moving forward with God because if he has your control of your mind it could keep you from having a relationship with God. It, it, it's, no, it's, it's no secret. It's no strange thing that, that our children, they, 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 they get, uh, the, the, the devil consumes their minds with all of these prosperous, prosperous things, all of these things that they see that makes them believe that, oh, I've got to have this, that, and the other. I've got to look a certain way. It's nothing but a trick of the enemy to get them to not turn to the Lord. But in battling with my own thorn, find a prime example of Paul in his preaching here. A prime example of how we should be handling our very own thorns. Find it interesting that he starts and he's talking about being in the presence of God. He, he, he talks about, uh, uh, he says there's something intoxicating about when you come into the presence of God and when you are in the presence of God you can't stay or remain the same. Something happens when you have a mountaintop experience in your relationship with God and as a matter of fact look just ask Peter. Peter was at a private showing. 
He was at a private showing with the master up on the Mount of Transfiguration. And, and, and he, he lost all stamina. He lost all stutter. He forgot that while he was in worship on the mountaintop, that there was some work going on down at the bottom. But because he was so caught up and he was wrapped up in the Lord, he forgot about it. And when you are in the presence of God, you, you, you tend to move a little different. When you, when you are being guided by God, you tend to shake things up a little differently. As a matter of fact, I believe it's said that it's almost like having shackles fall off your feet. And now you can move a little more freely and you gain a little more confidence when you are in the presence of God. Hebrews 4 and 16 simply says, let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace. And that was where mercy and I'll find grace that's going to help me to the top. Lord, have mercy. So Paul is telling us that, listen, I, I, I gained access into a third heaven. He had a one-on-one -on -one experience. So... The Lord in all his glory saw the Lord in everything that he had to offer. But find it interesting that he's not able to repeat what he sees. He doesn't go into detail. He, and he doesn't go any further about what he's talking about. So that subsequently gives me reason to speculate why he doesn't speak on the subject except just to introduce where he was. Maybe he's not able to put it into words because of how big and how great the experience was. Maybe he's not able to put it into words because his heart was just so filled and his mouth was muted that he just, anybody ever had some experience in your life that you thought were just, just amazing and you couldn't explain what took place? You were just so excited and every time you, 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 you okay, I, I pictured it like this. I pictured it like this. Uh, all of us, Everybody has a, a favorite artist that they, they like. So, some, depending on what, what, what age, range you, age range you're in, you may have different people. Some people uh, may react a certain way to Frankie Beverly May. Some people may act a certain way to Michael Jackson. Some people may act a certain way to whatever the latest rap artist is right now. They may act in a certain way. As a matter of fact, y'all y'all remember, and, and, and I challenge even some of y'all young folk, y'all remember when Michael Jackson used to have concerts. And those people that that that, that you would see at his concert on the front row, you know, the ones that had the money to buy the front row tickets. Michael Jackson would be performing and he would be doing his thing. And people, if you paid attention, they would be down there just crying and snotting and fainting and passing out. And, and, and don't let Michael moonwalk his way over and reach out and touch one of their hands that's real. Listen, you, have you ever noticed the expressions on their face? They, 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 their mouth is wide open. They can't get a word out and they just shake and just faint. Paul is pretty much telling us that's the kind of experience that I, I was in his presence looking around and I couldn't move. I couldn't say nothing. As a matter of fact, I can't even tell you what took place. And As a matter of fact, I, I pictured it in my very own life like this. Uh, I, I've never... Uh, if I've never had a surgery until uh, about three and a half years ago. Never ever had a surgery or anything like that before. And I pray to God that I don't have to do it again. But I, I remember being wheeled into the operating room. I got all my mind, all my sense. I know everything that's taking place. I'm looking around. Hey, y'all, all right. I'll see y'all in a little while. I, they whirl me into 
The operating room, I'm in there, and it's cold. I get it. I, I felt it. I said, okay, it's cold in here, and I'm looking, and I hear the strangest thing. I hear my doctor, uh, he, he, they, they playing rap music. So I got a little wary at first because uh, I'm, I'm thinking gospel in my head, but walk in there. But it relaxed me a little bit. But I remember them saying, all right, now start counting backwards. I don't think I made it past three numbers. And I was out. I don't know how long I was out. But what I remember is waking up and not being able to tell you nothing that took place past me closing my eyes for that surgery. You want to tell somebody that Hey, this is what took place. This is, this is what happened. This is how I came out on the other side. They went in and did. But, but you can't give details. You can't. Why? Because you don't remember. All you know is it took place. And, and, and I pictured that as Paul in his experiences that this thing that he had, what he experienced was Something that, if truth be told, he, he probably wanted to run and tell everybody that he possibly could. Listen, I behold the Lord face to face. I saw where him and the Father dwell. Listen, that place, Lord have mercy. We got to hurry up and get there. Or it could even change it to a fact of saying, listen, because I saw it, I'm better than y'all. I must be special. I, there, there must be something about me that I was called up to the very place. Y'all know how we get? Let somebody give you a VIP pass somewhere. You move a little different. You walk a little taller. You, you, you enter certain parts of the, weather, the venue a little differently because you got a VIP tag on. But, but Glenn, you ever see them walking when you plan and they walk into the area because they got they feel up there. They, they feel important and empowered. Say, listen, I ain't got to be with the common folk. VIP. But look at the Lord. The Lord knew just like he knows each and every one of us. He knew that I'm going to have to keep Paul humble. I'm going to have to put a thorn in his side, an irritant. It's going to remind him, hey, you got to stay humble. You've got to stay humble. But, 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 but there's a few things that I just want to point out. There's a few things that I just want to point out of the thorn itself and what, <laughs> what I saw that it did for Paul. First of all, first of all, the thorn causes Paul to reflect on worship. Now, this is where Paul really reached out and grabbed me because even though he has just visualized the third heaven and heard an inexpressible words and had seen indescribable things, when the thorn invades his personal space, he looks at the thorn as having an assignment. In other words, the thorn keeps him level-headed. Even though he doesn't want the thorn causing tremendous pain, he, 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 he also keeps his pride at a minimum. Because the truth of the matter is, not everybody has an opportunity to visit the third heaven. Some of us won't even make it to the first one, but much less to the third one. If we don't confess Jesus as our Lord, 
and live life sacrificially for him, we're going to have a hard time making it through. But what Paul does, he makes whatever's bothering him, watch this, he makes whatever's bothering him, be it physical, be it psychological, be whatever it is, be it a person, whatever it is, he makes a reason and uses it as a reason to justify and witness for the law. Now, that ought to help somebody right there. That should help somebody because your pain and your processes should make you reflect on the time you've spent in communion and communication with the master. It's right there. Watch what transpires because you'll discover that Paul was granted special access. The Lord blessed him with eyewitness of counsel account of something that 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 would cause him to think that oh I ought to be exalted because of where I've been but in fact the thing of it is Paul said no this thorn this thorn is bad this thorn is wearing me out this thorn is something that's going to take me down this thorn is something but he changes it and he uses it as a form of worship he says listen even though I may be suffering and going through I remember we I remember when I had good help. I remember when God was making a way out of nowhere. I remember when he lifted me up out of the muck and my clay. I remember when I was down and out and he lifted me. I remember when he put joy in my heart when it was filled with sadness. There was something about that thorn that reminded him even though I may be in pain, I can still praise him because I know that he'll lift me from this too. Went to a place of worship. Went to a place of praise. And, and it's crazy how sometimes us as people of God, when we get special access, there, sometimes we act brand new. We, we forget about what God has done for us and we forget about the things that he's brought us from and we think that it's all by ourselves only up until the point where we hit that brick wall again and it's simply God saying, listen, I've got to humble you all over again. Because you're starting to think it's you when it has nothing to do with you but all about him. But watch this. Watch this. It, it, it causes him to go into worship. It's, 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 it's a strange thing to, to have some, some pain and, and it be bothering you. The first thought in your mind is not, oh, I've got to go praise the Lord for what I'm going through. That's not the first thought. The first thought is, take this from me. Nobody's thinking about, let me run to the church house. Because I'm in pain. Let me run to down there to the church. And sometimes, sometimes there are some people that say, oh, I've got to run to the church. But notice this. Paul decides he's worshiping him all by himself. Because the church in and of itself, it, it, it doesn't get you through your thorn. Worship is what gets you through. It's a wonderful thing to come into this house and praise the Lord collectively and have a good time. But it's a different thing when you by yourself. And you can start to praise God in the midst of your pain. You can start praising him in the midst of your suffering. It's a whole different ball game when you can have a one-on-one -on -one experience with him so this thorn causes him to reflect on worship but watch this here's another thing that it suggested the thorn the thorn communicates with Paul and causes Paul to request a way out it's right there verse 12 and uh, uh, verse 8 it says concerning this thing I pleaded with the Lord. I pleaded with the Lord. This thorn, this irritant, 
bothered Paul so much that he talks it over with the Lord. He said, listen, Lord, we've got to talk about working this thing out. See, I just experienced something life-changing, but now I wish just to bask in the experience of the event that filled my heart with joy. But now I have to deal with this issue of my humanity, of what's going on in a threatening way. Lord, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this, Lord. Why, why I have to go through this pain. Why I have to go through this suffering? Why I'm looking around at other folk and they just just going along and they partying and they having a good time and they doing this, that, and the other, but I'm over here suffering. Lord, why do I have to? Anybody, anybody ever ask the question, Lord, why me? Why me? Lord, Lord I was all right doing my own thing. I was all right, minding my own business. I was all right where I was. Now all of a sudden you're going to show up with a thorn? I don't know about you, but I've asked that question. Lord, this thorn, it just won't go away. Just, it just, it just keeps bothering me, just keeps showing up, just keeps trying to take me out. But what we also must mention is that when Paul starts talking, Paul doesn't talk to me. He doesn't talk to you. He doesn't talk to somebody else. He talks to the one who can make his situation better. Some of us need to take note right here on Paul. Some of us need to take note. Paul starts to talk to the father. He didn't talk about anybody. He didn't go talk to anybody else. And, and some of us have a problem when it comes to talking to the Lord. We, I don't know what it is, but we, we have a problem about it. But he, here he is. He says, I'm going to take my problem to the master. We don't call him the master for nothing. We don't call him our father, which is in heaven, for nothing. He says, I'm going to go and talk to him. I, I, I don't understand that when problems arise in our lives, we, we talk to everybody else two, three, four hours at a time. You would have told them the story from the beginning to present day situation even if it started 17 18 20 years ago you would have talked to them about the entirety of the thing and you'll pick up the phone and call two three other people and have the same three four hour conversation but when we go to the lord we want to give him a 45 second prayer when we go to the Lord, we want to give him the cliff note version of it. When we go to the Lord, Lord, you know, fix it. Yeah, he knows. He knows exactly. But sometimes he wants you to open your mouth and confess and say, listen, Lord, this is what I need you to do. If you, if you, listen, if you just stop and took the time to have the same conversation with God that you've had with somebody else, what well, first thing is he's going to answer your call. He's going to give you direction. The most second important thing is he ain't going to tell nobody else. But we have a problem with making our requests made known. Yeah, we'll make a request, but is it really made known? Is it really? Lord, listen, this, 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 this child of mine been wearing me out. I need you to step in. Lord, them folk down there on the job, I'm about sick and tired of them. So-and-so came in the other day and she looked at me crazy and I wanted to It's all right. Tell the Lord the same thing. Lord, listen, I, I wanted to knock her out, Lord. I need you to intervene. But it fascinates me that Paul decides that I'm going to go talk to the master. 
go talk to the master. But another part of that is when he goes and talks to him, watch this. Paul took his thorn with him. Paul went, listen, Lord, see this thing you got? You done, you done stuck in my side. You see this thing that's been bothering me? You see this thing that I've been dealing with? You see this thing that I've been suffering with? Lord, can you get rid of this? Sometimes we need to learn to take our problems to the Lord. We'll dance around it. Lord, we want you to fix it. But have you really taken your problem to the Lord? And listen, he knows and he sees what you're going through and he wants you to come to him and he's going to be standing there waiting for you to come. You don't believe me? Look at the story of the prodigal son. Look at the prodigal son. Listen, he knew that he had been out there. His story for him was I was out there being immature. I was out there being irresponsible. I was out there doing some things. I didn't have no business. Now I'm out there and now I don't know which way to turn. So he decided that he was going to go back to his daddy's house. And on his way back to his daddy's house, what did he see from afar standing outside waiting? His daddy. Come on. Come on. We all make mistakes. We all fall short. We all need, but when you go to the master and you tell him, listen, I need you to help me. That's the first thing. Paul said, listen, I ain't able to handle this. It's rough. Every every time I turn, every time I try to do something that, that I think is good and it might not be right, that thorn. So it reminds him to worship. It reminds him to, uh, reminds him to ask and request for a way out, way out. But watch this one. The next thing that it suggests that I saw was the thorn creates in Paul the resolution to wait. The hardest word <laughs> for any of us to deal with is wait. Thorn creates in Paul the resolution to wait. That same verse here, concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. Three times. Three the number of divinity, three, the number of holiness. Three times Paul requests of the master to allow the thorn to depart. Now, I don't know, but I can imagine Paul saying, whatever lesson, (laughs) whatever lesson you wanted me to learn, Lord, (laughs) I've learned it. Anybody ever said that? Listen, Lord, I I done learned my lesson. You ain't got to worry about me doing this no more. Only to find out it's the biggest lie that you've ever told. Because as soon as the Lord answers your prayer and pulls you out that situation, But as soon as you get out, you start to walk a little different only to find yourself falling back into the same hole that you just pleaded three times to get out of. Sometimes we have to wait and allow whatever the lesson is that's being taught. Listen, ouch, Lord have mercy. Whatever lesson is that's being taught, sometimes we have to wait and learn the lesson before God says, all right, you finally got it. I can remove it from you now. Sometimes we get in a hurry. Sometimes we try to uh, 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 get out of it faster than what. Listen, the Internet is a terrible thing. It's a good thing, but it's a terrible thing. And I say that because if you got an internet and you've got a crafty friend, there's a great possibility whatever you're struggling with, you can find a way out of it. 
It might not be the right way. It might not be the legal way. It might not be a good way. But somehow or another, when you down and out and you struggling and you in pain and you looking for a solution, guess what? You going to find a way to get out of it. The quick hurry up and fix it plan doesn't always pay out. Doesn't always uh, allow you. And, and the Lord wants you to wait and learn the lessons that he has in store for you. Watch this. Uh, watch this. I have, I have two, boys, uh, uh, two boys at home that play basketball. One of them, uh, he's, a, he's a senior. Braylon, he's a senior. Uh, uh-oh, plays uh, varsity basketball, starting guard, and he's in uh, tip-top shape. He's in tip-top shape. I, I'd, I'd give him that. He's in tip-top shape. Uh, but don't, 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 don't think your tip-top shape is better than my shape. It's not. <laughs> but he's in tip-top shape. And, and to see him out on the court doing his thing, it's a, it makes any parent proud that he's out there doing his thing. And this is his senior year, and he's he, we looking for a great year, and, and y'all pray for him. But I got another son in the house that who just entered his freshman year. Ryan just entered his freshman year, and he made the... JV basketball team as a freshman. So we, 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 we're proud of that. We're proud that he, he's made the JV team. And, and, and Ryan is in shape. He's in shape. We, we, not tip top, but he's in shape. And because he's made the JV team and we want him to be successful because he got four more years of this. He's been going to training. He's been doing well. He's in there and the personal training is doing awesome. Uh, matter of fact, he came out just the other day with his coach and his coach beat him outside saying, listen, Ryan dunked the ball and he dunked it with authority. I said, all right. All right. So he's getting that training, but next week, Ryan starts an additional training, something that's new to him. He starts a physical, a real physical fitness training with a professional trainer with weights and other tools that's needed to get him to the tip-top shape. Now, I already know, and I got it in my head, I'm sure Sister Wright has it in her head too, that it's going to require a whole lot of encouragement for Ryan, because them first few days of strengthening and conditioning, it's going to be tough. Trevor, you can, you can attest to it, it's going to be tough for him. It's going to be times where he's going to Probably say, I don't want to go back no more. Probably some times where we're going to have to encourage him. Listen, I done already paid for it, so you're going. <laughs> but we're going to have to encourage him. Now, I know that he's going to want to push through. I know that he's going to have the determination. But I realize that it's going to be hard. And why I'm saying this is simply because in order for him to gain the strength, that he needs to perform well and get better and get stronger, he's going to have to endure those training processes. He's going to have to endure the weight lifting, the jumping up. He's going to have to endure all of these things. But while he's enduring, he's gaining strength each and every day. While he's enduring, he's gaining the ability to perform even better. And I stop there just to park and say, listen, sometimes the thorn that we're dealing with is something that we have to endure and push through and make it. Why? Because we have to get the lesson and be taught what God wants us to learn. We all want to stop and say, listen, Lord, I'm, I'm done. I can't handle this no more. I'm, I'm sick and tired of going through this. I'm, I'm tired... 
But we have to say, listen, hold on a little while longer. Just wait just a little while longer. Isaiah 40 and 31. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Which means if I'm waiting on him, he's going to build me up just a little bit stronger. If I'm waiting on him, listen, Lord, I want you to take it away. But listen, I hear him saying, I hear him saying, This last one changes his mentality all the way around. This last one, been talking about how he's been pleading and trying to figure out a way to get out of his situation, trying to figure out a way to remove this thorn. Whatever the thorn is, if it's a person, He's been trying to figure out how to remove that thorn. If it's a place, trying to figure out how do I get out of this, Lord, please just make it depart from me. I know you said I can say to the mountain, be thou removed, but sometime that mountain might not supposed to be removed. Maybe you're supposed to climb over it. But this last one, I'm going to get on out of here. This last one said, the thorn then crystallizes for Paul. And it gives Paul a reason to witness. Paul hears him say, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Now, that don't even sound sin. That don't, that don't even sound right. My weakness is going to make my strength perfect. It, it just don't sound right. But, but when we are talking about God, his math don't equals our math. His ways are not our ways. Thoughts are not our thoughts. But when Paul looks at this, he's immediately persuaded to change his perspective. In other words, here he was. He was looking at the master for a way out. But this is where Paul reasons and allows it to turn to witness. He reasons with the master in speaking Despite his thorn and something hits him and says, listen, Lord, I hear what you're saying. He said, Lord, I've been dealing with this for quite some time. He said, Lord, you know I've come to you three times already trying to get you to remove this thorn from me. But it wasn't until Paul heard the Lord's voice tell him, my grace is sufficient. That, that moment Paul realized that, listen, God, you show right. If I can use my imagination, I pictured him backing up saying, listen, Lord, I'm sorry for all of the complaining that I've been doing. I pictured him saying, Lord, I, I, I know that I've probably been getting on your nerve. I know that I've been calling on you, trying to get you to remove this thing from me. But now, Paul's perspective has changed. Now, Paul realizes that there must be a lesson that the Lord is trying to teach me right now. Well, if you put yourself in Paul's shoes a little bit and you take the time to look at your own thorn, I guarantee you there's probably a lesson that he wants you to learn. And sometimes we need to understand that if we pull away too soon if we get out of the car a little bit too fast 
we won't make it to the destination that the Lord is, has in store for us. We might be, we might not build the strength that's needed to go on a little bit further. And you wonder why every time that thorn shows up in your life, you have a hard time dealing with it. Well, maybe it's because you hasn't fit, you haven't finished the lesson that's before you. My grace is sufficient. I'm irritated. I'm irritated, but I'm I'm illuminated. I'm I'm irritated, but I can see the light. I'm irritated, and sometimes I want to throw in the towel. Irritated. You cry out. Truth be told, we we've probably cried out more than three times. Depending on what it is. Lord, take this from me. Your irritation, your thorn can cause you to become selfish can cause you to think about yourself when in fact there may be something in store that God is trying to work out for you. Irritated but illuminated. I get it. We, 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 we're living in times right now where people thorn have hit them so hard. It has them questioning, God, are you even still here? God, are you even still present? God, do you even still care? There are people that are dealing with mental problems. There are people that are dealing with problems with their spouses. There are people that are dealing with problems with their children. There are people that are dealing with financial issues. People that are dealing with real life situations. That we should stop and encourage them to say, listen, God is not through with you yet irritated but illuminated the door is open there may be one who may have been saying or may be saying right now listen I've been dealing with this thorn it's been wearing me out I've tried all that I can Unfortunately, I've talked to all who I can talk to. But now you realize His grace is sufficient. Even in weakness, I am strong. How is it that in my weakness I can be strong? Well, let me tell you, you're strong because you have somebody that's holding you up on each and every side. How is it that I'm able to make it in my weakness when I don't even have the ability? Listen, when you don't have the ability, God says, I have. says, I'll build you up where you're torn down. Give you strength where you're weak. And if you can't go any further, I can see him saying, all you have to do, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. Standing there with outstretched hands. Ready to 
help you and take you in your time of weakness. So when you think you down and out, when you think that you have nowhere to turn, be reminded that because of the love and the compassion that he has for you, he says, remember, I sent my only begotten son for you. And because I've sent my only begotten son for you, do you not think that in your time of weakness, I'm not going to be there? I told y'all that from the beginning, I have my own irritants, I have my own thorns. But I'm going to stand like Paul. Say, listen, Lord, though you slay me. <laughs> yet will I trust you. Though you take me through the valley. I hear you saying, lo, I am with you. Even going through the fire. Realize that I won't be singed because I'm a child of God. The door is open. You, 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 you don't have to deal with your thorn all by yourself. Paul took his thorn to the Lord. And I challenge you to do just the same. Listen, I've taken my thorn to the Lord. I've taken them all and I've laid them all prostrate before him. I said, listen, Lord, I don't, I don't know what to do with him. No, you're teaching me something. I know you're trying to lift me from something, but here it is. Now help me. Get what it is that you have for me. has been extended it's yours to accept or to decline irritated but I can still see the light and God's grace is still in the midst of it all amen amen listen Listen, we are now up to our tithe and our offering. Amen. Lord, show enough loves a cheerful giver. Amen. So if you need to be serviced by an usher, please raise your hand and they'll make sure that you have that that you need for uh, sowing of seeds. Amen. We encourage you and we invite you to continue to sow your seeds. Be obedient in your giving. Listen, God doesn't require much. Amen. He says, listen, just 10% of what I've given you, that's a pretty good deal. He says, you keep 90 and I will make the 10 work. Amen. And if the Lord says so and he puts on your heart and you want to give more than the ten, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Press down, shaken together, and running over. Good measures will be added unto you. Amen. Amen. All right, uh, ushers, we are now in your hands. 
those that are watching online, please be reminded that you too can still give and sow seeds into this ministry. Uh, you can go through our website, uh, through uh, there are different ways to give that you can give online. And we thank God for everybody in their giving. We don't take it lightly. And we love each and every one of you because you could be sowing your seed somewhere else. But you are choosing and chosen uh, to, show, to sow your seed into the Great El Bethel Church. And we are thankful unto God for that. how we thank you for these your gifts and your givers now God we ask that you would take this offering let it be used for that that was given which is kingdom building bless everyone that gave those that had the desire to give but had it not in Jesus name we pray amen amen listen just uh, I'm sorry just a couple of quick I'm sorry one reminder another announcement Reminder, no business meeting tomorrow that has been postponed, that has been postponed until a different date, and we will let you know when that happens. Uh, Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday night Bible study. Um, we are going to change it up a little bit. Uh, the Lord has told me and been working to ensure that we continue to do ministry. And in the ministry, we want to make sure that we are deeply diving into the word of God. So with that being said, and it helps me also. So with that being said, this Wednesday, I believe it's the first Wednesday of the month, uh, I will begin having in-person Bible study here at the church on Wednesdays at 7. We'll still be streaming. I'll still set up so you can watch and tune in online. But I encourage you and I invite you to come out. Uh, we will uh, have a curriculum that we will be going through and we're going to stick with it and we're going to dive even further into the Word of God through Bible study. So this Wednesday, this Wednesday, 7 o'clock, we will be here. Uh, Brother Glenn or Brother, Brother High, I can't.
guess maybe sometime Wednesday during the day, we can have the air turned on. <laughs> so we ain't in here burning up. Amen. But Wednesday, I invite you all to come and be here, and let's just dive further into the Word of God and uh, make sure that we do what's necessary to strengthen us through these times that we're going through right now. Amen? Amen. So that is my announcement, and I'm hoping and praying to see you here. But if you're not here, I'm still going to be here. If I have to teach to the pew, or if I have to bring Dixon and somehow wrestle him and teach to him, that's what I'm going to do. Amen. But that is what's going to happen on Wednesday. All right. All right. Listen, thank you to everyone that's tuning in online. Uh, I appreciate each and every one of you. Sister Pearson, good to see you. We're still praying for you. Good to see you online. My mama's on there, so y'all know I'm going to say hi to my mama. Amen. Amen. And those that are in the house, a special, special thank you to you for being here and allowing me to feel your presence in this house on today. All right. If there's nothing else, uh, let's all stand. As we get ready to go and leave this place and go into this another week, God, we pray that you would allow your angels, your hands to move and be upon us each and every day. Father, we thank you for all that you continue to do day after day, the provisions that you make in spite of God. Thank you for being God all by yourself. Now, God, how we ask that as we go from day to day, we pray that you would keep us, that you would hold us in the power of your might, God, that through this week we can stop at any given point in time and say, Lord, thank you for all that you have and is doing. Now, God, dismiss us from this place but never from your presence. Give us traveling grace that no hurt, harm, or danger will come upon us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.